world for decades, but don't question now, I mean, I was in the studio last night and saw him on ABC broadcast TV, you know, talking about what was coming and happening. And then I got home and I saw him on CNN. And then I was online and I saw clips of him on Fox this, this weekend getting massive attention, but they're doing little short sound bites. I've got this Russia Today uh, where, you know, they talk to him for 11 minutes. He has a chance to really roll out and lay out what's happening and going on. He predicted the 87 stock market crash. He predicted the fall of, you know, so many other things, the rise. Uh, and uh, he is on with us for the next 52 minutes. Gerald Salente is a United States trends forecaster, author and CEO of the Trends Research Institute, founded in 1980. He is uh, noted for predicting the 87 stock market crash and the fall of the Soviet Union. Salente is a, a close combat practitioner with a black belt trainer whose practice reflects his proactive philosophy. He's a self-described political atheist. I look at things for the way they are, not the way I want them to be. And, uh, Gerald, let's talk about that. He's been on Oprah Winfrey, you name it, the Today Show. Um, I, I, I told the story before you were here with us about, I see all these people that are at a local radio station I do a Sunday show out of, and back when I was bashing Bush, that was popular and trendy. They liked me and would talk to me. Now one of them won't even talk to me and then sits out in the control room talking crap whenever I'm bashing Obama, saying he's a puppet, because they have invested their psychology, who they are, their identity with him. They've been suckered by the con man and can't admit it. This is so infantile and so sad. So it's not even that they're stupid. They are under the mind control of this system, aren't they? Well, you've really uh, put it perfectly. And Before we go on, I, I want to thank you for including me in your wonderful production, The Obama Deception and applaud you also for putting it out there so quickly, cleanly, and accurately. And I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be a part of it and having that opportunity. Great. You've had a chance to see it. I mean, give us your review. All right. That's what I said. I think it's excellent. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be a part of it. And, uh, well, we're I would to have say you. that <laughs> lightly, you know. And uh, I, I, as Thank I you. said, I, I applaud you for getting out there quickly and, and pointing out what a deception this is. This is a song and dance show. And you, you aptly said it. These it, People have this psychologically invested in this agent of change. And when you look at the people who he's brought in, for example, to fix the, the, the financial problems, such as Geithner and Orzag and, and Summers, uh, Clinton retreads Robert Rubin protégés, it's like bringing in Meyer Lansky, Machine Gun Kelly, and Bugsy Siegel to win the war on crime. I mean, these are the same criminals that made it happen, and now they're going to fix it. So the, what happens is, and we see this, the liberals are bigger hypocrites than the conservatives. The conservatives believe they're, they're lying. If they want to go to war, you know, they'll go to war. You know, they'll, they'll, we're going to go kick butt. They believe it, they'll do it. Right or wrong, they believe it. The liberals, on the other hand, they're the bigger hypocrites. They make every excuse that you could imagine for Obama sending more troops to Afghanistan. What, 21,000 now? And I love it. The last 4,000, they're really not troops. They're advisors. What am I, an imbecile? I grew up during the Vietnam War. I remember those advisors as well. But they say things like, well, he inherited this situation. They always make excuses. They've, they've drank the, the, the Kool-Aid and their brains have been washed. And they refuse to see what a big lie this is. He is, he is the antithesis of everything that liberals believe. Look what's going on now with the uh, finding about, about the CIA torture. And then say, oh, no, no, we're not going to prosecute them. Well, why not? If it was you or I that did this, then we would be brought to justice. But there's always an excuse the liberals will give for giving Obama, who we have decided, and we're writing about it in the next edition of our Trends Journal, that he is really the worst of Clinton and the best of Bush. Explain that. Well, the worst of Clinton in that this is the guy, you know, that Clinton being the guy that really destroyed our economy 
he pushed through NAFTA and globalization that George Bush the first and Ronald Reagan couldn't get through with the great promise with him and Al Gore that this was going to create more jobs and elevate our standard of living. And of course, it did nothing to do that. It, it drove us down uh, in reverse. This has nothing to do with free trade. All it had to do with was opening up markets to slave labor opportunities so that CEOs could get their products made by slaves and ship them back overseas so they can make those absorbent salaries that they've got. And that's phase one. Then it also vertically integrates the economy and creates a wasteland back in the U.S. and Western Europe so the bankers can come back in and buy everything up, correct? Correct. And that's the other Clinton one. Let's remember again who he's brought in. Machine Gun Kelly, Bugsy Siegel, and Meyer Lansky. And when you look at these guys, these are the Clinton crew that destroyed the Glass-Steagall Act, the banking act that was put in place. So the banksters couldn't be get in the brokerage business, and they would do traditional banking, and the casinos couldn't gamble. These are the same gangsters that deregulated the financial equity business so that they could come up with all these so-called exotic financial instruments such as derivatives, credit swap defaults, and you name whatever else that nobody knows what they're talking about. These are the same people under, under, under Clinton. And then, of course, you know, Clinton, you know, was, people forget that he was bombing Iraq just about, what, on a, on a weekly basis for almost eight years. And when Madeleine Albright was asked by Leslie Stahl on CBS's 60 Minutes, if the sanctions against Iraq were worth the death of over 500,000 Iraqi children under the age of five, according to the UN, she said, quote, it was worth the price. So that's the worst of Clinton, without going into more of it. And then the best of Bush is, he, he's keeping these wars going. On Easter weekend, when nobody was paying attention to the news, when I say nobody, the majority, uh, he asked for more money to wage the Iraq war and the Afghan war. He's keeping these wars going. Innocent people are being killed in Iraq for false reasons. The reasons that Bush gave us was that there were ties to al-Qaeda and weapons of mass destruction. Both of them are false. So he's, he's the, and, oh, and also the rendition, he's keeping that going, where you could, oh, we're closing Guantanamo, we'll just send them overseas to get tortured. Oh, and look what he's doing with the wiretapping. He's defending Bush's wiretapping excesses. He's, so actually, he's, he's actually expanding it, and if you look at total troop numbers, first they said instantly he'll bring the troops home, then 16 months, then 23. Now his top generals are saying, maybe never. Maybe we'll just keep 150,000 in Iraq, but they've already doubled Afghanistan. Uh, so a total, it's an increase across the board and you talk to the leftist they're not really even leftists they're just literally buying this this madison avenue creation and they say well he you know at least it's him doing it now i mean this is unbelievable it is it's, it's hypocrisy as i as i said and you aptly put, pointed it out that he's increasing the bush wiretapping excesses he's doing everything that the liberals hate and and again it's this song and dance America, I mean, look at this guy. I mean, could you imagine a president appearing with a comics on a late night comic show like Jay Leno? Where's the dignity? But they'll do anything to push it through. Hey, what do you and think about are. him uh, lying about everything? I mean, not just big issues, but bowing, grabbing his hand, bowing all the way straight down, and then saying, oh, I dropped something on the floor. Oh, I was, he was too short when the guy's almost as tall as him. He clearly bows and then lies about it. Well, look what Sarkozy said about him, uh, about, uh, uh, this hardly made the news as well when he, he talked about basically what a lightweight Obama is. And, uh, they said he's you know, a groveling, uh, kiss butt fake, total lightweight who just literally just grovels. And then Sarkozy said, look, all he does is put out rhetoric. It's not even real. They're, they're actually going to, you know, keep all their missiles, but he's running around saying they're going to slash him. And Sarkozy doesn't even care about that. The point is he just said this guy, even in private meetings, is a complete liar and a complete groveling lightweight. Again, uh, you, you hit it right on the numbers. And when we look what's happened to America, 
and this is one of the, the trend alerts that we put out, is we're calling for an intellectual revolution. People better get smart about this and stop listening to comics and clowns and, and buffoons and, and, that's, and con men. And that's what we call Obama. You know, he, he, he's the con man in chief. And, and the, again, they, they, you go to any of these liberal websites or any of the websites, even, I mean, in newspapers, they quote what Colbert said about this or that, what John Stewart said, what Olbermann said, what Hannity said. How about what Mo Larry and Curley said? I mean, these people, they're, 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 experts on nothing and they spew out about everything you know you hit on something there he, he puts this fake jolly laughing he was on 60 minutes and keeps laughing at the reporter and the reporter looked at him and, and it was real you could tell the it said